It was a big day in the fight over health care reform in the United States and the Senate's push to replace Obamacare. John Yang digs into the details. Late today, the Congressional Budget Office issued its analysis of the Senate health care bill. It found that by 2026, 22 million more Americans would be uninsured than under current law. It would also reduce the federal deficit by $321 billion over that period. Now, that estimate of uninsured Americans is slightly lower than the CBO projection for the House version, which passed in May. But a rising tide of opposition is adding to the difficult dynamics of trying to pass the Senate bill this week. Joining me now to break all this down, Julie Robner. She's the chief Washington correspondent for Kaiser Healthcare News and our own Lisa Desjardins. Lisa, Julie, thanks for joining us. Julie, let me start with you. D d drill down a little bit for us in that number of uninsured, and also what did it say about the effect on premiums? Well, basically what the CBO said is that even though the Senate bill is different in many, many ways from the House bill, they end up in roughly the same place in terms of number of people who would be uninsured. Basically, both of the bills would double the percentage of people without insurance compared to the Affordable Care Act. One of the sort of remarkable things that it found is that it would do it for different reasons and in different ways. For example, the Senate bill would peg that it's helped with people paying premiums to a less valuable plan, a plan that would pay fewer of people's medical expenses. And what they found was that for a lot of low-income people, even if they get help paying the premium, they wouldn't buy insurance because they wouldn't have any help using their insurance. The deductibles and that other uh, cost sharing would just be too high. Lisa, you were just on a, on a conference call with the CBO. What, would, what, what did you learn? I think that's the standout point here. We know who these uninsured people would be. The 22 million that you just spoke about, John, those are mostly low-income Americans and some on the edge of middle class. We're talking about $30,000 in income for an individual. So that's not poverty. That's twice the level of poverty. The CBO found here that some of those groups, people making under $30,000 a year, would go from about 10 to 15 percent uninsured, maybe 20 percent, to maybe 40 percent of the people making thirty thousand dollars or less would be uninsured under this plan so that's a big hit to that one group and lisa of course you're usually up on capitol hill for us what does this report do to the calculus of trying to get 50 votes uh, by the end of this week to pass this bill in the senate today started and it was already very tough math in fact many of my sources all day were saying they weren't sure how senate leader mcconnell could do it this makes it even more difficult we've had reaction in just the last hour rand paul has now said that he is going to vote not just against the bill but to even the idea of bringing it up that's a procedural vote that we expect maybe Wednesday called motion to proceed. If they can't get 51 votes for even starting this debate on that bill, it's a very bad sign. We're seeing makes me concerned comments from Senator Cassidy of Louisiana. John McCain said this is obviously not good news. Across the board, this is definitely not helping Republicans. It's not clear how this gets across the finish line. And of course, the 51st vote would likely be the vice president who would break a tie. Julie, it wasn't just the CBO report that came out today, but there were so there was other bad news for this Senate bill today. Well, there was also a, a, a plethora of uh, interest groups. Most of the healthcare industry has actually come out and said they really don't they don't like the way this the direction this bill is going some of them vehemently oppose it some including like the national governors association this is the bipartisan group which barely agrees on anything at least came out and said we don't think it should be done this fast the national association of medicaid directors the people who would be in, involved in actually implementing the change to this bill came out with a very very strong statement saying that no amount of flexibility can make up for the dollar amount of cuts to the medicaid program in this bill according to the cbo it's 26 percent over 10 years and Julie, the Senate made a change to this bill today. What did they do and why did they do it? That's right. The Senate, the original Senate draft that we saw last week um, required insurers to continue to sell to people who have pre-existing health conditions, but there was nothing in it to uh, encourage or, or urge uh, healthy people to actually buy insurance. So they put in today, or at least in what the CBO scored, uh, what they call a six-month lockout. So if you had if you had any kind of a break in coverage of more than 60 days in the previous 12 months, you would have to wait six months before you could get coverage under this new bill. So Lisa, you say we need 50 votes in the Senate. Uh, they've got five already saying they are, they're against it. You've got a lot on the fence. Who should we be watching? Who will tell us in the next 48 hours whether or not this is going to pass? Right now, almost every Republican senator is key, but the one I'm watching the most closely is Senator Shelley Capito of West Virginia. Think about her state. Mr. Trump, President Trump, won that state by 42 points. 
If he cannot get a bill across the finish line in a state with that much support, there's a real problem. She has serious health problems in that state, among them the opioid e epidemic. She wants more money in this bill for that. We'll see if she gets it, but that might not be even enough. She has a huge Medicaid population. She's not the only one, John. I really ran a lot of the statistics here. Think about this. Almost half of the Republicans in the Senate have states where 20 percent of their whole population is on Medicaid. That's something they're taking very seriously with this bill. Julie, are we likely to see more changes in this bill as they try to get to that 50 vote mark? Oh, absolutely. One thing that the CBO, I guess one piece of good news for the Republicans in the Senate is that the Senate bill would save considerably more money than the House bill. So in theory, they have money to play with. We would expect more money to be uh, uh, devoted towards the, uh, helping the opioid epidemic. You know, they could make more changes. The problem, the difficulty is that any change that moves towards the more moderate members will harden the opposition of the more conservatives, and any change that makes the conservatives happy will harden the opposition of the moderates. So actually, they only have two votes to spare. Finding 50 votes, not an easy thing. Well, it'll be a drama all week as we get uh, toward Friday and the self-imposed deadline. Julie Rovner, Lisa Desjardins, thank you very much. Thank you.